Um, and, uh, what I would like to do in the coming 15 minutes is uh, to explain a little bit what what measurement error is about and specifically survey measurement error because that's how we got into all of this. But uh, I think most of the concepts that we'll talk about apply uh, to different types of data as well. And um, there's all kinds of courses. Uh, we teach this one course uh, that's online, um, but, but there's other courses as well. So for those of you who are familiar with this, um, Something went wrong with the presentation there. So, so for those of you familiar with to total survey error, how, how, how many of you have heard that term, total survey error? Okay, a, a whole, uh, uh, maybe about half of the people. So if you can think about total survey error, total survey error is, um, it gives an overview of all of the different steps in doing a survey. And so at each step is the idea uh, some errors could occur. And the total error of a survey consists of all the errors at all the steps that, you, um, that you've taken to get to the final data collection and, of course, eventually your conclusions. So what measurement error is about is mostly this step here. So we're, I'm mostly going to talk about this step here. So first you come up with an idea of what you would like to measure. Then you come up with what kind of thing would measure that idea, that construct. And then, you know, you get the response from the person and all kinds of other things happen. And those two things are not the same either. So we're talking a little bit about this, but mostly about this. And this part we often call validity, but there's a lot of confusion about the word validity, so I'm going to try to use that word as little as possible here. All right, so what is measurement error? Um, well, it's pretty simple. It's just the difference between what you wanted to know and what you know. So for example, uh, Mr. Jones, who I'm sure you're all familiar with because he's always used as example, uh, he says he went to the doctor three times, but he actually went four times. So then the measurement error is minus one. So I'm keeping it simple here, but this and this is really it is really that simple in the basics, right? So there is a numeric value of the difference between what you want, what you saw, and what you wanted to know, and that's measurement error. That numeric value, that's what we're talking about here. So you could also uh, show that in a picture. Um, um, uh, yeah. Okay. So. Please ignore that. Um, uh, so you could show this in a picture um, where we have the true visits that was the three, right? And we have the answered visits, which was four. And the, I put the true in a circle because in practice we probably won't really see the true answer. So that's the problem of measurement error. The problem is we would like to have a certain value, but we don't have it. We'd like to have the three value, but what we got was four. So this is in a box because that's what we got. So boxes are observed, circles are unobserved. And if you're familiar with structural equation modeling, then that notation will be familiar to you. Um, and there's different ways of, of writing this. You can write that in a picture. You can also write it in an equation. I was recently told that you should not start by explain, explaining things with equations, but I'm, I'm making that mistake here. So, you know, the answer, number of answered visits is equal to the true visits plus some error. So that would be three equals four plus minus one in our previous example. Yeah, clear? So, so it, it always, almost always follows this kind of model. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to say immediately here we're using uh, linear models and I'm talking about continuous variables here, but you can genera sort of generalize all of this to categorical variables and other types of models as well. I won't get into that because then I'd be busy talking to you for 15 days rather than 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was easy, right? We defined measurement error, uh, it seemed pretty clear, uh, but now I'm going to complicate things to you, for you a little bit. Um, and those complications you have this gentleman to thank for. Uh, it's Frederick Lord who wrote a book, uh, uh, Theory of Mental Test Scores. The idea being that sometimes there isn't really something like a true value, right? Because what's your true value of um, being uh, in favor or opposed to a certain policy or liking ice cream or anything like that? So what's the true value? Can we open up a person's brain and observe a number there? Not really. So there should be some other definition of true value. And they came up with such a definition for opinions and attitudes. And that definition is slightly more involved. It's the difference. So this is for, it's still the difference between the answer I got and something, but now it's the difference between the answer I got 
and the so-called true score. But what is the true score? Okay, the true score is, I'm going to read it out and, and then I'll explain it. The hypothetical average of the answers I would get if I wipe your memory and ask you the same question again over and over. So, uh, if I were to, for instance, can I draw here somewhere? No. Okay. All right. So, if I were to um, show you this here, this thing, and I'd ask you, how do you, what feelings do you have with this picture? <laughs> so, this is my Rorschach, this test, and I ask you, what feelings do you have with this picture? Positive? I like it very much. You like it very much. Okay. <laughs> Now I, I zap you with the uh, thing and you completely forgot and we go back in time and we're at the same point where we were before. If you're looking at the video, you have to rewind. <laughs> what what I feelings? Love I love you love it. Okay, so you're not exactly the same, but because before you liked it and now you love it, right? So there is some difference between the two answers and what I will assume is that you didn't remember what you said before because I wiped your memory, the thing is working, and uh, you, the, the variation in the answers that I get symbolizes a variation in the answers around some true value that I don't know, but I'll just define that as the average of all of the answers. So I could repeat this for eternity and we'd be standing here and you'd be giving me the answers and you wouldn't get bored because your memory would be wiped over and over. And the average of all of those answers would be the so-called true score. So it'll be somewhere between like and love, if we can give a score to that. So that would be the true score. And here's another example, you can read that for yourself. I'll, the slides will be shared somehow, I sure. The video all right, the slides are in the video, yeah. All right, so, um, right. So, <coughs> Now, there's all these different reasons why there might be measurement error, and I'd just like to stress for, a quick, for quickly why this why might be important. Why is it important that there's errors? So here's an example. Suppose that I wanted to do a regression analysis. Uh, sorry, does, who, uh, does everybody understand regression, R linear regression analysis? All right, so, so you have the idea is this might be, I don't know, your health, and this might be your education or value or something. And uh, this is the true line that I'm interested in, but then these blocks here, which is the observed data points, they might be in the wrong place because of the measurement error. And what does that do with the line, do you think? Any ideas? What will happen to this line if I start moving around these points? Change the slope, right. So I'll get the wrong slope, right? I'll get bias in the regression coefficient. If I just sort of jumble them ab about randomly, do you think the slope would go up or down? Either way, you down? Right, so that's, uh, that's a, a th indeed what happens. If you start jumbling about randomly, you see gradually as you put more jumbling in, and we measure jumbling by reliability, so more jumbling is less reliability, where reliability is perfect if it's one, and if and it's uh, zero means it's just a bunch of random numbers that have nothing to do with the person's opinion or fact about that person. And so if the reliability is zero, then this li line will just, the x will be just random numbers, and so it won't be related to anything, also not to the y, and so therefore the slope will be zero. So this is what a lot of people know, that measurement error lowers the slope of regression coefficients but in general doesn't have to always lower the slope. If you have a, more, a multiple regression model with multiple predictors in the model, then it might also increase the slope. And if you have more complicated measurement error or you have interactions in the model, it can go all the, it can go everywhere around. You can have negative effects when they should be positive and so forth. So there is a reason why you should care about measurement error is what I'm trying to say. Specifically, random measurement error if you're looking at relationships between variables. All right. So, very briefly, uh, the, the second part of my talk, so this the first part was about what is measurement error and why is it important, and the second part is what can you say about it? How do you know how much measurement error there is? Well, you know, it, you don't know this true score, this true value, so how can you quantify the amount of measurement error without knowing this true score? That's the main problem of measurement error modeling or measurement error estimation. 
And what I'd like to argue and, and show you a little bit is that this requires some designs, by which I mean data collection strategies, and uh, com these designs are combined with assumptions. So I'll, I'll illustrate what I mean. And I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are sort of an overview of different strategies in more or less order of compli com complexity uh, of what you might do to estimate the uh, reliability of a, a measure without knowing the true value. So the first is to know the true value. That's kind of clear. If you know the true value, then you're done. The, the second is this criterion validity, test retest, and then some other things that I, I, I won't discuss, internal consistency. And multi-trade, multi-method, I'll briefly show because Melanie and both Melanie and Tobias and also Alex will talk about that at more length. But the general idea is you collect some data, you make some assumptions about those data, and then together they give you the estimates of the reliability, sometimes something which is called validity, and I won't go into any philosophical debates whether that's a, a good word or not. So here's an example. If I knew the truth, for instance, uh, doctor's visits, I just looked in the register and I could see how often you visited the general practitioner. It's problem solved, right? So who thinks the problem is solved? Who thinks the problem is not solved? <laughs> okay, what would be the problem? Why, is, why isn't it solved? The question may be different in the two ones. People may conceptualize the question differently. Right. There might be di different def de definition differences, for instance, between these two. There might be all sorts of differences. And it might also be the case that the admin variable itself mm -hmm. is not correctly registered. For instance, I might only have GP visits directly to your general practitioner, but you could go in some countries directly to the hospital and visit the GP there. And then it wouldn't be in the register. So there's also measurement error sometimes here. So the idea is, if you have this, then you get the most amount of information possible but it's difficult to get. Uh, well, if you had those data, then why are you doing a survey in the first place? You probably didn't need to do it. And, you know, this assumption that it's uh, perfect is often violated. Right? So the design is get perfect data. <laughs> the assumption is the data are perfect. <laughs> right? And if, if you combine those, then you're fine. But in practice, uh, this, this almost never obtains. So another thing that you may have heard of who has ever heard the term nomological net? All right, one or two people. What about criterion validity? Criterion correlation, yeah, much more, many poor people. Those two things are kind of the same. I looked up the word nomological before this talk because I have actually never done that in my life. It seems to mean uh, undisputable truth or undisputable laws or something like that. So basically it's uh, what I would call a simple sanity check. So if you're trying to measure sort of, you know, GP visits, then that should be related. If you, if you observe people who are very sick, then you expect they go to the general practitioner more often. If that's not the case, then something's wrong. That's really it. So uh, I'm going to skip the way in which you could calculate this, but basically you just calculate the correlation between what you think it, the variable that you're trying to measure should be related to and what you actually measured. So there is also these assumptions there. We, you know for sure, right, that's why it's nomological, that there is some correlation and you know what sign it's supposed to be, positive or negative, for sure. There's no other explanation for uh, it being the wrong sign than measurement error. That's important. Right. And secondly, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, that's, so that's the, uh, that's the um, assumption. It's easy to do. You pretty much always can do this. And I encourage that you do it. But the disadvantage is you don't know much. Right? Because if you see that these GP visits are related to uh, health, for instance, then, well, that's a very low bar for a <laughs> measure of, uh, of GP visits. But if you see they're not related, it doesn't really tell you anything. So it's not estimating reliability, it's just giving you a, a, literally a sanity check. All right. That's telling. All right. So this is the sort of main one that I wanted to uh, get to because MTMM is a version of this. And test retest is pretty much what I've um, um, demonstrated earlier. Uh, with um, Darren, is it? Yeah. So you pretty much just ask the same question 
twice. Uh, for example, people have done this with the Rorschach, that's why I use that as an example, and they said this has excellent test-retest correla cor correlation, because I, asked, I showed people this Rorschach blot, you know, I, we all know it, uh, it's you, you show somebody a vague picture and then they talk about how they see their mother in the picture or something like this. Right? And so then if you do it again and they talk about their mother again, then it's a good test-retest reliability. So problem solved. Who thinks the problem is solved? Who thinks the problem is not solved? Okay, what might be the problem? Yes, indeed. So you just remember the answer. So what you basically do, and you can put this in a picture like this again, you have the true score, you have these two separate observed scores now. Right? So it's the same picture as before, except that I have it twice. And each time I get, the er I get error, but now what I assume is that the error you make at the second time is not related to the error that you make at the first time. Right? So it's the memory wiping thing, the, what I could do with this, my laser, you know, what, uh, if I shine the laser with a certain frequency into a person's eye, then they will forget everything. And if that's not the case, then you get a correlation between these two things here. So, it, and if that correlation is there, then the, obviously the, um, you know, then this assumption of no correlated error is violated. And what you get is that, um, sorry, and what you get is that um, you, you, you will get a too high test retest correlation, right? So you can't really trust this number. All right, so then there are sort of two ways to solve this, one of which is MTMM, which uh, Melanie and, and Alex and uh, Tobias will talk about, and the other of which is the longitudinal approach, and Alex will combine the two. So one way, you know, is I could increase the amount of time. So I could show you this, my Rorschach, and then I'd, okay, yeah, yeah. So I could increase the amount of time, so I could show you the Rorschach and then wait for two years and then show it again and then maybe you'd forgotten. But the problem is maybe you'd change your mind. And the other is um, I could, um, um, uh, you know, if I have, to, but, but the, the, the other problem is if I do that, then uh, you could change your mind. And those two things go against each other. So one of the solutions, and this is very, I go to, okay, this was what I was gonna skip, sorry. Is this multi-trade, multi-method thing, and I'll just show you the very explanatory picture. <laughs> this is always a great moment. I remember I saw the, the first time I saw this picture, and you know, feelings of confusion and, and happiness simultaneously <laughs> flooded me and I, I still have those feelings whenever I see this picture. I'm sure you're experiencing it right now. Uh, but, but basically what you can see about this picture <coughs> is the idea that I don't need, I, I can do these two repetitions. So here's two repetitions of the same variable again. For instance, the Rorsch, the, the, some Rorschach at one point and another kind of um, personality test at the second point. But um, I'm still able to estimate this er correlated error because I also <coughs> ask different questions. And here's an example, let's see. An example, oh here, an, an example of what that might look like. I think you have this example as well? I have the model. Okay, you have the model. So here's pretty much the way that would work. You have uh, satisfaction um, about different things and uh, you ask that satisfaction in different ways. And by asking the same question in different ways and using different question, to measure this, the correlation um, with same way of asking, such as Rorschach or agree-disagree or scale number po points, you can separate the correlated error and so forth from, um, from the reliability. Okay, I'll just, these, this about another thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have this handy table, which uh, I can recommend uh, uh, thinking about. Every, uh, every method has information that it, that it gives you and it has assumptions and so they have positives and negatives. So I'm not here to propagate one single method, but I think that you have to think very carefully about the data you can collect, the design, the assumptions that are reasonable for that design and what you're trying to get out in terms of uh, measurement error from that design. 
So I'll leave it at that and uh, uh, I'll just say choose the right tool for the job and we're going to hear more about that from the other speakers. <laughs>